From the case of a boy who captured the hearts of many, dubbed as the boy in the box, to a mute teen who became known as John Doe number 24, to a possible victim of a serial killer. There are eight John Doe cases that remain unsolved. In the early morning hours of October the 11th, 1945, in Jacksonville, Illinois, police found a young teenage boy. He was unable to provide his name due to the fact that he was deaf and mute. He remained in the Illinois mental health care system for over 30 years. Deaf, mute, and later blind, the young black man survived beatings, hunger, overcrowding, and a dehumanizing treatment that is characterized by state institutions through the 1950s. In spite of his environment, he made friends, took on responsibilities, and developed a great sense of humor. People who knew him found him remarkable. He had a straw hat that he loved to wear and carried a backpack with his collection of rings, glasses, and silverware with him everywhere. Possible hints to his identity include him scalling the name Lucas as his fandom accounts of wild foot stomping jazz bars and circus parades. He loved to dance. He later died at Sharon Oaks Nursing Home in Padora, Illinois on November the 28th of 1999. He died from a stroke and police believe he was around 64 years at the time of his death. Upon reading about his story in the New York Times, acclaimed singer-songwriter Mary Chapin Carpenter wrote and recorded John Doe No. 24. She also purchased a headstone for his unmarked grave. Also touched by the story was award-winning journalist David Burke, who wrote God Knows His Name, The True Story of John Doe No. 24. If you have any information, you are urged to contact the Morgan County Sheriff's Office in Morgan County, Illinois, which is listed below. The next case is that of the boy in the box. On February the 25th of 1957, a traveler discovered the child's unclothed body in a garbage-filled road off Sub-Sahana Road in Philadelphia. He had been wrapped in a blanket and placed inside a cardboard box. His body had been beaten. The blanket he was wrapped in was a large piece of inexpensive flannel. Well-worn flannel with faded designs of diamonds and blocks in green, rust-colored red, brown, and white. In addition, a piece of the blanket was found inside the box and smeared with automotive grease. A third piece of the blanket remains missing. The box which contained the child's body was from J.C. Penney. It was located in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania and was marked furniture fragile, do not open with a knife, and it had originally contained a white bassinet. Records were unable to pinpoint the purchaser of the item. His nails had been recently cut, and his right hand and both feet were rough and wrinkled, indicating that his limbs had either been submerged in water prior to or shortly after his death. Strands of his hair were present on his body, leading authorities to believe that his hair had been cut shortly before or following his homicide. This has led to some speculation that he was raised as a girl prior to his murder. A coroner's report was unable to pinpoint if there were any broken bones or inflicted trauma prior to death. A strand of long brown hair, not the child's, was removed from the scene. In addition, a man's handkerchief with the initial G was located near the box. Short strands of hair were present on the material that were tested to be determined if the hair came from the unidentified boy, but the results were unknown. Through the boy's DNA, they were able to determine what his father might have looked like. Here is the composite. Over the past 40 years, this case has been opened and closed many times. The boy's remains were exhumed in late 1990 for DNA testing. He was re-entered into a tomb marked America's Unknown Child in Ivy Hill Cemetery in Philadelphia. The boy is referred to as America's Unknown Child, the Fox Chase Boy, or the Boy in the Box. If you have any information regarding his case, please contact the Philadelphia County Medical Examiner's Office. On August the 12th of 1969, a white male was pulled ashore by a fisherman. He was found floating face down in about four feet of water in the Atlantic Ocean under the Bearcat Bridge in Rutkin Baker Causeway in Miami-Dade County. The victim was found with long brown and gray trousers, however, no other personal effects were found with the body. 
His case is linked below. On June 13th of 1972, a 14-year-old bike rider discovered the body of a black child that was found in the Massey Creek near I-95 exit in South Fairfax County, Virginia. He was beaten severely in the head and thrown into the water naked. An autopsy revealed that he had eaten some time before he was murdered, as his stomach was full. If you have any information, please contact the Fairfax County Police Cold Case Unit listed below. On February the 6th of 1973, the body of a nude white male was found in Wilmington, California, in a ditch beside the Terminal Island Freeway and Pacific Coast Highway. He is believed to be the victim of serial killer Randy Kraft. Randy Stephen Kraft is an American serial killer known as a scorecard killer and the freeway killer. He murdered over 51 young men in a series of killings spanning between 1972 and 1983, the majority of which he committed in California. He was convicted in May of 1989 of murdering 16 victims and is currently incarcerated on death row at San Quentin Prison in Marion County, California. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact the Los Angeles County Police Department listed below. On October the 10th of 1980, the body of a white male was found floating near Sunshine Sky Bridge in Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, Florida. He had been in the water an estimated 18 to 24 hours before he was found. No apparent trauma was noted and he appeared to be well taken care of as he had a few crowns on his teeth. If you have any information regarding his case, please contact the District 6 Medical Examiner listed below. The next case is that of a black male who was found on June 23, 1997 electrocuted on the third rail of the southbound D train tracks at the 145th Street and St. Nicholas Avenue station in New York City, New York. He appeared to have been in the Marine Corps as he had an elaborate United States Marine Corps tattoo in blue ink on his upper left arm. If you have any information on this case, please contact the New York City Medical Examiner's Office. The contact information is listed below. On June the 13th of 2006, the near skeletal remains of a black male were located at Headland Drive and Jalo Drive in East Point, Atlanta, Georgia, behind a close cleaning business that had been closed. With his body included a gold chain and a distinct necklace with the letters CVC and an eye design. If you have any information regarding his case, please contact the Fulton County Medical Examiner, listed below. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. If you would like any case suggestions, please drop it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I upload my next video. I will catch you guys on my next video.